Hello again, buckaroos and buckarettes. It's good to be back with you. And I've had a question about how, what does the right hand rule mean, and by extension, how does that relate to vector cross products? Seems like a pretty good idea for a video, so let's do that. Now, you'll see the right hand rule when you see people lay out coordinate systems for some kind of analysis. And I've got one drawn right here. This is x, y, and z, and this is a right hand coordinate system. Now, I'm going to explain it in sort of colloquial terms, sort of the old-fashioned way that I learned about it, maybe others did. And then I'm going to explain what this means in sort of a more mathematical sense. So we'll do the, the, the simple explanation first and the mathematical explanation second. So this is the simple, or the intuitive explanation is probably a better one. Okay, right hand, okay. If I grab the x-axis right here and rotate it into the y-axis, stick my thumb up on my right hand, that's where the z-axis should go, right? That's what the right hand rule means. Now it seems awfully arbitrary. Why right hand instead of left hand? Well, left hand coordinate systems are okay. There, there's nothing wrong with a left handed coordinate system. We tend to use right handed coordinate systems. We have to standardize on something. Um, so if you Grab the x-axis, rotate it into the y-axis, and stick your thumb up, you get the z-axis. So what I've done, you can't really see it here, I'm left-handed. Okay? I can write an x, a y, and a z on my fingertips, which I've done here. It's kind of hard to see, but you get a little closer there, you can see it. And I can write with this hand. Okay? So for what that's worth, I could actually take exams. I could do that. See, this is a right-handed coordinate system now. Rotate x into y, you get z. I could do this while I was take, writing an exam with my other hand. Now, look at my grades. I'm not sure it really helped any, but I could at least do that much. Um, so that's what a right-handed coordinate system means, or the right-hand rule. Um, if I rotate y into z, I can go down the x-axis. As long as I get them in the right order, the, the resulting uh, vector will be perpendicular to the other two and it will be positive in the sense of going with my right thumb. So this is a very workmanlike way to do this. So let, let's come up with something maybe a little more uh, mathematically satisfying than that. And that is the vector cross product. Now what's a vector cross product? Well, if there's one thing we know about mathematics, it's that it doesn't care what kind of numbers we use, right? Can we add integers? Of course. Can we add fractions? Yes. Can we add decimal numbers? Yes. Can we add negative numbers? Yes. Can we add complex numbers? Yes. Can we add vectors? Yes. Can we add functions? Yes. Can we add matrices? Yes. And there's a whole long list of other things I'm sure that I don't know about. The point is, addition is addition. And mathematics mostly doesn't care what kind of uh, entities you're working with. It's still addition. Well, the same thing holds true of multiplication. Can you multiply scalars? Yes. Can you multiply fractions? Yes. And so on and so on and so on. Get to vectors, vectors, lists of numbers. Can you multiply lists of numbers together? Yes, you can. But it turns out there's two ways to do it. Both are mathematically uh, valid. Both uh, appear routinely in engineering or mathematical analyses. It's just a matter of now which one do you want? Okay? When you are adding doing a vector dot product, let's see do a dot dot product here. So if I have a dot b and a is a1, a2, a3 all the way down and b1, b2, b3 and so on down. So these are vectors. Okay, and there's a big old dot between them. Okay? When you do a dot product, what you get is a number. Okay? You get A1B1 plus A2B2 plus A3B3 and so on. That's a vector dot product and there's that big dot right there. That's one way to multiply vectors. It's one way to multiply lists of numbers. It's not the only one. The rules of mathematics allow for one other. Okay. The other one is this one. It's called the vector cross product. In fact, here, just get rid of that there. Okay. The other one is a vector 
cross product. Now, the, when you use the vector dot product, what do you get is a number. You could see where I was headed there, that was going to be a number. When you do a vector cross product, what you're going to get is another vector. Okay? It preserves both magnitude and direction. Okay? So what, what, let's do this. Here's, uh, if, you, if I say A cross B, okay, there's, if you go on Wikipedia or something like that, there's, there's uh, several different explanations for how to do a vector cross product. What are, what's the actual the me mechanics of how to make a vector cross product? If you want to do this in three dimensions, here's how you do it. Okay, I'm going to write it out. And then I'll tell you what it is. Whoops. Okay. Now, i, j, and k are what you call unit vectors. Now, let, let's pause for a second. Huh? What's that? Where did that come from? Huh? What are these? All right. You have to stop thinking like an engineer or a scientist long enough to think like a mathematician. Okay? Fine people, but they think differently than I do. Okay? And so what they when mathematicians see an operation or see an entity enough times, they give it a name. All right? Um, I'm standing on a floor. No big surprise. Well, why is it called a floor? I don't know. A long time ago, somebody made this big horizontal flat thing that we walked around on and went, wow, that's, I like that. That's handy. Ah, I like that. We, this is good. We should all have these. And then his friend said, or her friend said, well, what is it? I don't know. It's this horizontal flat thing that we walk around on. Well, it needs a name. And maybe these were Neanderthals or something. He said, let's call it a floor, because they spoke English, of course. Um, and so we started calling it a floor. Now we know how to talk about it. Well, this thing keeps showing up. It, it's a result of looking at the fundamental rules of mathematics. This pops out. This is an entity. Okay? We have to call it something. Well, let's call it a cross product. Now, there are several ways to calculate a cross product. If you've got three, you, you're going to do this. And by the way, it becomes handy in mathematical analyses to define what are called unit vectors. They have direction that go parallel to the axes, so that goes parallel to the x-axis, parallel to the y-axis, and parallel to the z-axis. And they have a magnitude of 1. So by when you multiply a scalar by one of those, you don't change its magnitude, but you do give it a direction. Okay? These turn out to be pretty handy. Somebody decided to give them a name, decided to call them unit vectors, right? And the thing I get a lot from my students is, okay, there it is. What does it mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything until you assign it a meaning. Once this mathematical entity describes something physical, then it has physical meaning. Before then, it doesn't, okay? So if I am, am looking at a piece of rotating equipment, uh, like I have a router, you know, and if I swing my router around, I notice it's got a gyroscopic uh, coupling on it. Well, that's described by a vector cross product. So A cross B doesn't mean anything. But when I take my router that's got the axis spinning, and I try to do this with another axis, and I get a force in a perpendic mutually perpendicular direction, ah, now this means something physical. So mathematics doesn't have any inherent meaning. It has meaning only to the extent that we use mathematics to describe something we care about. All right? And I'm sorry if you don't like that answer. That's the answer. So how are you going to do this? Well, there's a thing called Kramer's Rule. I think that's what it is. If you want to uh, uh, calculate the determinant, which is what these vertical lines are, of a uh, matrix, and the matrix is 3 by 3, you can take that and find the determinant of the remaining 2 by 2. That, grab those 2 by 2, that, grab the, these 2 by 2. And I'll show you what this looks like. So that looks like AX, oops, that's not right. Okay, AY, AZ, BY, BZ, okay, plus J, okay. And do the exact same thing here. So this is AX, AZ, BX, BZ, plus K, all right, 
a x a y b x b y okay there you go that's how you do this well what's the well, if you have two a two by two matrix writing down the determinant is pretty easy oh there you are you must have gone off to get a burps of cola or something while I finished this anyway here we go what I did is I just expanded this out there's what it looks like if you want to know how to expand this out you can check it out on uh, Wikipedia or something like that there's what we get well all right let's do this what let's, let's draw the same coordinate system I had before there's Y and there's Z okay again same things I got out of how to align that there we go how to line that up on my fingers but that's a right-handed coordinate system and all of these vectors are mutually perpendicular well let's see if a is this one and this is one zero zero that's that vector this one over here we'll call this B and that's zero one zero okay those are my two components right and what I hope I'll get is if I cross X into Y I'll get a Z what I want this to be is zero zero one that's what I'm hoping I'll get well let's see let's this is this is the math this is what it looks like so this better come up with that so let's see well a y is zero so that goes away that goes away a z is zero that goes away it doesn't matter what that is okay x okay, that's one b z okay that's zero so that, that's zero that whole the term goes away a z is zero so it doesn't mean the x is zero oh boy so I have so far I have zero I plus zero J on the right track here and I'm telling you right now if it wasn't gonna work out would I be shooting this video no but let's go through the, the, the finish it up here just for reasons of good form okay a sub X is one okay that's good B sub Y is one that's good a sub Y is zero B sub X is zero so what I get is plus K and that's the unit vector in the Z direction so if I take a rotate it into B I should get uh, this uh, something vertical okay uh, something perpendicular to the plane of a and B well okay let's let's uh, map this to this coordinate system well if I cross X into Y I get Z that's what just happened okay so there you go um, that's the right hand rule for coordinate systems and how it applies to the vector cross product. Hope this helps and I'll talk to you next time.